Hey there guys, welcome to lesson number 56 in our drawing series, Drawing Techniques for Beginners. Today's lesson sees us start a new project. This is our uh, pet portrait. This is a picture of my brother's dog. Uh, she's a Weimaraner and her name's Myla. I've had a few of you over on the group saying how excited you are about starting this. And I just thought that this would make a lovely picture because we've got these piercing eyes. Uh, we've got a lot of detail in there uh, and we've got some very short fur. I know we did uh, the shadow exercise, which was the Siberian Husky uh, a few months ago, a couple of months ago now, which uh, concentrated on longer hair. But we've got some quite short hair in here. So I think this will be quite a nice project to just practice something different. The, the equipment that we're going to be using for the entire project from start to finish, uh, we've got a two inch very soft brush, I've got my kneaded eraser, and I really would recommend using an 18 inch ruler, particularly if you're going to be using the grid method. Uh, it just saves you having to do half a line with let's say a 15 centimeter ruler or a seven and a half inch ruler and then moving the ruler across and it just leaves room for error and making slight mistakes. The pencils that we're going to be using, we've got a two H, an HB, a 2B, 4B, 7B, and my secret weapon that I like to use towards the end, which is my black pencil uh, crayon or my black colored pencil. This is a Faber-Castell Polychromos. Uh, it's the black Schwartz, uh, and you can pick those up from Amazon for a pound, one pound fifty. Now the pencils that I'm using are Caran d'Ache Graphwood. I've been using these for a couple of years now. I really like them. They're quite soft. You can get some very dark tones with them. Um, and once you settle on a pencil, I'm not saying that this is the best pencil that you have to use, but once you've settled on a pencil, I think uh, it's, it's fine to just stick with that. You don't need to keep chopping and changing. What I've done is I've made three by three centimeter squares over my reference image and on my paper. I like working in that size. Um, I don't feel like I've got bogged down with too many squares on there, but also they're small enough to give me the idea of of where the details are. Now I'm gonna plot the drawing out using an HB pencil. I really would suggest using a 2H or a 4H pencil in your initial layout. So I'm using the HB here just so that it shows up on the video. I've labeled my grid A to J down the side and one to six across the top. This just gives you a better idea of the reference and where certain things are. Uh, it just helps you find and locate the squares that we need to work in. So without further ado, uh, let's start plotting out our, our lovely picture here. So I'm gonna start with this eye on the left and I can see that it's entering into uh, the, the square which is D1. So I'm somewhere in D1 here and uh, just getting a rough idea of where this eyeball is sitting in relation to this square. And this is the, this is the beauty of this grid method is it does start to get you to see things slightly differently so that when you do want to start having a go at freehand, you've, you've got a foundation and an understanding of, of how to look for certain things and where certain things are in relation to others. Um, the reason that I don't always like to use the grid method, particularly if I'm doing a uh, if I'm doing a commission piece is all of this extra graphite is very difficult to get rid of. You're never ever going to completely get rid of it. Uh, and I just feel that if I was doing a commissioned piece, ideally I would want to be able to have a very, very plain piece of paper in the areas that are plain and, uh, and without going into the tooth of the paper too much unnecessarily. But as a tool to learn how to draw freehand, I, uh, I am actually quite a fan of this. There's various different methods that we can use. We can use dividers. We can use light boxes and trace. Uh, I've heard loads of debate over on other Facebook groups, you know, people saying that tracing's cheating, using a light box is cheating. Well, whatever you can do to plot your drawing is, uh, is fine with me because the magic isn't in the plotting, that's just one element of it. 
the magic really comes in when we're starting to try to add the value and add the realism and the light sources and the textures so if you're starting out and all you can do is hold your piece of paper up to a window and trace it out slightly go for it absolutely go for it okay so we're going to try and get as much detail in as we can so looking for these small creases in the face And understanding that we don't have to get things right perfectly, perfectly right straight away. The more information you get down on your paper, the easier it is then for you to make adjustments as we go. And I'm, I'm looking for this ear. So it's lying in E1. And I'm just getting a, a, a general feeling for how this is lying uh, and it actually comes up in to the top of C C1 so it, it sort of finishes up in this area here and it turns across we've got a I think we call it a dog leg that, that shape there no pun intended um, and we're just looking for some basic shapes and some rudimentary shapes that we can latch on to a little bit like looking for images in clouds on a, a spring day when we've got these lovely white fluffy clouds and we can quite often find images and faces in them so our brain is very good at doing this so rather than thinking of this necessarily as a dog's ears all the time what small details can we find within the dog's ear that helps us bring these patterns out okay so the edge of Myla's ear is is originating in this c0 almost i didn't i didn't number that one over there I'm looking for the basic angle, the general direction of the shape of the head, which is now coming up. It's, it's dissecting B2 and it goes up into A2 almost I would say about a quarter of the way up and then the top of the head slightly flattens out there's a small peak in there where it does start to then come down but we're in A3 now over into A4 it doesn't quite come to the bottom of A4 and then we're slightly back up again before we exit A4. And now we're into this ear. I'm being very loose with my pencil strokes. I'm not bearing down. I'm holding the pencil quite far back. I'm, I'm nowhere near the tip of the pencil. Uh, I don't want to damage the paper. I don't want to make lines and marks on the paper that are going to be impossible to erase. So let's have a look at some of these wrinkles. Let's, let's find this very dark shadowed area. So we're looking in B4, B4, which is here. And we're over to the right, probably about halfway up. And that exits and dissects to that region. Uh, we're now coming this almost comes halfway just following this down this is this is going to be a good reference for is this line uh, to, to be able to then plot the eye off 
and the rest of the ear, the shadows around the, the eyes. So let's just check that we, we know where the end of this ear or this crease, this darker area comes to. So it's G5. Am I somewhere in there? And what we do have is it comes back in, so that ear separates slightly from the rest of the face in there. We have this dark shadowed area in there. So this is representing this, this area here because the face actually comes away or the ear comes away slightly from the face there. I, uh, I really enjoyed the last project, our Statue of Liberty project. It was, um, it took a lot longer than I actually assumed it would do. I always underestimate these things. I always think that I've picked something that isn't going to take too long. So I'm not even going to hazard a guess as to how long this project's going to take us. We're not going to rush it. It's, um, it's not something that we have to get done in a couple of hours. I think that the biggest lesson that I've learned over the last three and a half years, or four years, however long it's been now, is patience. The longer, the longer you take with these things, the better the result tends to be. So we're just going to we're just going to go with this. We're going to see how how long it takes. It doesn't matter. So just this underside of the mouth now. Just getting these general shapes in. I, I'm, I'm looking at H two now for this. The, 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 the dog's head's at a slight angle, so it's not, it's not always so easy to figure out where things are lying. And it makes life slightly more difficult for us. So you th I think I've gone, I think I've gone slightly too fat in there. But that's okay. I mean, even though I am using the HB pencil here, I'm pe pressing on very lightly and I'm layering the, I'm layering the lines. I'm going over them two or three times just to make sure that I'm making them dark enough, certainly so that you guys can see the method that I'm going through, but I can still remove them. And that's a really important element. I had somebody asking over on the Facebook group uh, a couple of weeks ago, when's the last time that I had to completely erase something? Uh, and I honestly couldn't tell you. When the last time I had to erase something was, I really couldn't. Because what I do is I go through in a me methodical fashion and I'm trying to pick up any mistakes early on so that I'm not having to erase large portions. I'm double checking, triple checking. Okay, so we've got this angle in there.
So I think we're starting to get something like, let's finish this ear off now. Um, and again, that's going to then, it's going to balance the drawing out so that any obvious mistakes will be easier to pick up because we're starting to get the balance and the, the symmetry between both sides. Lovely. But yeah, I was mentioning earlier about the Facebook group. If this is the first time that you visited my channel, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it. I've been making these videos now for a few months. We're on to lesson 56 now. And I uh, put together a, a Facebook group where I, I really wanted to just share the, these videos and try and teach people some of the methods that I've picked up over the last few years. I've, like I said in, in most of my videos, I, I started drawing from scratch. You know, I, I dabbled a little bit here and there. Uh, I've got some small daughters. Uh, well, they're not so small now, but... You know, they'd, they'd often ask me to, to draw Disney princesses and things like that. And um, so, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd drawn various things before, but nothing major. And then I just decided that I wanted to give it a go and watched a few YouTube videos like I'm pretty sure you guys have. And then started to get more and more into it and really started to enjoy the process. I'm looking for the edge of this nose now. Uh, we're on F3. So yeah, just started to really enjoy the process and bought various online tutorials and things like that and uh, ended up falling in love with it. And since then, I've, I've done lots of commissions for people. I'm, uh, I've done some cartoon work. I've, I've done quite a lot with my art, really. Obviously started the YouTube channel up and the Facebook group because I wanted to try and teach people um, how to do it. You know, drawing's given me so much in terms of a hobby that's constructive. It's very relaxing. Um, and I just wanted to try and give a little bit of that back if I could do. Uh, and I understand that many people aren't in a position to spend you know, large sums of money on online courses and things like that. You know, I was lucky enough to be able to to do that and have some spare income where a monthly subscription to something, you know, didn't impact too negatively on my life. So I put these videos together and these tutorials together. And uh, here we are at lesson number 56 now. But what I've tried to do is I've tried to put together the, the things that have really worked for me because I guess like most of you, 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 you're trying different things and you're getting advice from here and there and you're looking at time lapse videos and you know pretty much the same things that I was doing and it's hard to piece them all together and find out what actually works for you and what doesn't and what equipment works so what I'm trying to do is just put a coherent set of lessons together that really just showcases the things that have worked for me in a way of teaching you that hopefully is is simple and understanding i'm trying to do these videos to about 30 minutes and um it's been fantastic seeing some of your work so go and join our facebook group it's called tutorial tuesdays beginners to pro and uh I really will look forward to seeing some of your work on there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you turn the notifications icon on, you won't miss any of the uh, of the videos. I'm releasing a couple of week. I do some scribble arts as well on Sundays when I have time. And I do like to try and release a couple of these videos, these tutorials a week, certainly on a Tuesday and uh, also at the weekends. Just getting some general idea of where this eye is fitting. I'm 
But I think you can see we are piecing this together nicely now. It's starting to take on the, the shape and the character of Myla. And like I said, we're going to get as much detail in as we can. And then we're going to start laying down the graphite. Now, if any of you have followed me for any length of time, you'll know that we start with the very soft pencils. Sorry, we start with the harder pencils rather than the softer pencils. Uh, we start with the 2H, the 4H, and we move up into some of these darker pencils. Now, what we're going to start with in the next lesson, once we've plotted this out, we're going to go straight in with the 2B pencil. When we're drawing fur, it's, um, it's not as important that we get this very, very smooth, uh, sort of very well saturated tooth of the paper that we need for skin. And when we're drawing a portrait for somebody, that, that's, a, that's actually really important that we get a very smooth transition. Now, because we're drawing fur, we've got a texture to it. And as you can see with this, there's going to be a lot of white in there. So we don't actually need to have that foundation layer of the harder pencils. But if you've just come to, uh, to this channel or this video, and it's your first time here, I really would recommend going and having a look at our series called uh, Essential Pencil Skills. There's six lessons in there. And I just really teach you the basics of how to lay the graphite down, why we go through the pencils in the order that we do. There's a few small projects in there. We, we, draw, we draw a couple of spheres and a barrel. And then we move on to the baby project. Let's get this highlight in there. So we've got this squared highlight. And it's a slightly different shape, I'm guessing because the eyelid is protruding over. But we've got those two highlights. They're going to be the only white things on this page, or as close to white as we can get them. Everything else is going to have value in there. But yeah, go and check out Essential Pencil Skills. What I've tried to do is make a a group of playlists now with each of the projects in there. So the last one was uh, the Statue of Liberty project. So all of the lessons for that project are going to be in that playlist rather than going through all 50 lessons. I've made obviously a, uh, I've made a playlist called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginner to Pro, which is every lesson in there, all 56 of them. But rather than scouring through them, if there's a particular project that you wanted to do. I, I understand that not everybody enjoys drawing the same things that I do. Uh, I'm trying to find reference images and, and go, go in an order that isn't too daunting for people. So we started with some very simple ideas and then and moving up the difficulty. That was sort of something that I wanted to, to get from the beginning. But uh, by all means, you know, go through in any order that you like, but that's why I've grouped them together in the way that I have. So this edge of this ear is in F5. And it's just going off the edge of the page there. So the, the edge of the body now is in F2, up here, yep, and I'm just looking for where that cuts the corner, uh, over into this area, beautiful. So I'm, I'm really excited to uh, to see how we all get on with this one. I think I may even give this to my brother as a as a Christmas present. I'm not sure 
how I'm going to keep it a secret because he, he does follow me over on Instagram and Facebook. So it might be a it might be a present that he sort of knows is coming. He has asked me to draw a picture of Myla for, for quite some time now. Okay, well, I mean, I think I think we're sort of there with this now. I think you get a, a, a good understanding of, of how we're doing the things we're doing and why we're plotting things the way we are. So I think I'm, I'm happy enough now to leave you with it. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to plot in as much of these details as I can, these big shadowed areas, because they are ultimately what are going to make or break this drawing, and it's not going to break it. We're never going to break a drawing. Um, it's what's going to make this drawing. So just getting these big shapes in there. And, uh, yeah, like I say, I'm quite happy to, to leave you to it now. So enjoy it, enjoy the process. Don't forget to, uh, you know, turn your paper as much as you can. I try and keep the paper still as much as I can when I'm making these videos. But if this was a um, if this was a commission that I was doing and I wasn't videoing it and trying to teach people, I'd be moving this paper all over the place. Um, it's sometimes really a good idea to turn your picture upside down because we can then start to see from a different perspective how things are lying. You know, so I can straight away see there that. I'm not 100% happy with the angle that that mouth was sitting on. Just by turning it upside down. There, so I've, I've already made a slight adjustment. I've got a little mistake in there. I like the way that that mouth sits there. That looks okay to me. So yeah, it's just another it's just another way of of teaching your eye and training your eye. It's very easy for us to become saturated our brains to become saturated in what they're seeing and as no longer capturing everything. But give that a go. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm really looking forward to the project. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Find the Facebook group, which is called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro. Uh, don't be shy to show us your work on there. We're a good group. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's much more to say about that. Keep your pencils sharp. And I'll see you at uh, the start of Lesson 57, where we're going to start adding some value. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Speak to you soon. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.